Happy uh, Thursday morning to you. Our text comes from the epistle of last week, which was very short, Galatians chapter 4. I'm just going to look at verse 4. When the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. The right time is very important. Timing can be actually quite critical. It could be the difference between life and death. If you watch the uh, Tom Hanks movie, uh, Apollo 13, it's where the, uh, there was a problem and they never made it to the moon and they almost died in space. And in it, there's a scene where they finally figure out that they have to burn or light up their engines for 13 seconds. No more and no less. If too little, it won't work. If too much, they'll run out of fuel. And you'll see that in the movie, but in real life, it's true. There was a, um, the watches the astronauts were given were uh, Omega Speedmasters. And they had to go through a ton of certification just to be allowed to go into space because they had to have that kind of quality. And you might think, why would they overthink a watch? But in this case, that watch, they hit the timer 13 seconds on and that was it. And they did it and they survived and they came back. The timing had to be perfect. Around 6 to 4 BC, we're not sure of the exact date, which always surprises people, uh, that's when Jesus was born. Our calendar is off by a few years by the people who made it, hundreds of years after Jesus' birth, by the way. But so around 6 or 4 BC, Jesus came. He was born. And when we think about babies, we don't really think about them coming at the precise right moment. It never really works out that way. My children uh, always came in very uh, difficult times for a pastor. Uh, my oldest son was born in the beginning of December, right as Advent started. Uh, my daughter was born in the beginning of Lent when uh, the Lenten season started. And my youngest was born on Easter Day in the afternoon. Uh, those are not days and times I would have personally picked. And not only that, I was aware and as a pastor, and I've been around many of our members who have babies, they give you a date, a due date, but there's no precision in this. They could be weeks early or weeks late, or they can induce or they cannot. I've seen mothers are like, oh, Monday, or we're going to induce the child, and Sunday they're in labor. So precision is not a baby thing. But in this case, God chose the precise right moment to send his son, born of the virgin, into this world. And in our text, the important part of this text is at the end where it says, so you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. The idea of this man, Jesus, came to save humanity. I wonder if Christians sometimes lose sight of that. That the Christian faith is based on Christ coming to save us from our sins. Uh, to make us his children. And, and we use the word children a lot of days, but the actual word is sons of God. Uh, which is in a universal sense, like mankind. I realize that I live in the year 2023, and these things are all up in the air, but it's a universal word at this point. Uh, it's sons of God, children of God. And that's what he did at the exact right moment. Maybe that's the thing that shocks us the most when we look at the life of Jesus is that it wasn't random, that God was always in charge, and Jesus always was in charge. And when he died on a cross, in the, even though it looked like complete chaos, Christ was still in charge. And when he rose from the dead, he was still in charge. And his church, which could look quite chaotic, I admit it, as someone who works in his church, it can look chaotic. Jesus is still the head of his church and fully in charge. Uh, we thank God for that, in fact. So let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that in your time and in the right time, you came into this world to save us, to make us your children. Help us to proclaim the message of Christ coming to this world for the salvation to all those around us. In Jesus' name, amen.